Hi there, welcome to this quick start video on how to configure your complete system setup so that you can record audio, MIDI and VST instruments through Cubase Elements, Cubase AI or Cubase LE9. We're going to look at three core components. First up is how to set up your audio and MIDI interface to work perfectly with your DAW or digital audio workstation. Second, we're going to look at fine tuning your audio hardware to work perfectly with your DAW. And lastly, we're going to make sure that your studio connections are set up so your inputs and outputs are routed correctly through your hardware and they're set up correctly inside of Cubase. Let's get started. There's loads of different ways of using Cubase, but the most important component of the system is a computer. You may want an external MIDI and audio device, and of course you may want studio monitors or headphones so you can monitor what you're recording. Cubase packs a lot in, in terms of functionality, so it's really important to make sure that your system meets the minimum system requirements, and you can find these on the Steinberg website. It's also really important to make sure that your external MIDI and audio hardware devices are installed and up to date with the latest manufacturer's software. And you can do that on the manufacturer's website. Once everything's installed, it's time to go to the Devices menu inside of Cubase. Go down to Device Setup. As soon as you select Device Setup, on the left-hand side, you can see a list of the devices. At the top, we've got MIDI, and we can look at the MIDI port setup to see our MIDI inputs and outputs. Down the bottom, we've got the Virtual Studio Technology Audio System menu. Now we can select our hardware device from the drop-down menu on the top right-hand side. Of course, it's okay to use built-in audio or the built-in sound card as long as it meets the system requirements. I'm using a Steinberg UR22 Mark II, so I'm selecting that. Below the device's drop-down menu, you'll be able to see the input latency for your selected device. I'm selecting my audio device, going to the control panel, and now I can choose the buffer size. Now this is important because the lower the buffer size, the less latency you're going to get. But perhaps you're gonna get quick some pops because your computer can't process all of the audio fast enough and put it out again to your audio device. So it's important to find a balance here. I'd suggest using as low buffer size as possible for audio recordings and then move it up to the highest possible setting for mixing because you're going to need more processing power to power up all the plugins. It's really easy with the Steinberg hardware because it has direct monitoring, so your audio doesn't pass through a computer loop. You're monitoring directly from the hardware itself, so you can instantly hear whatever you're recording. Let's go up to the MIDI port setup and have a look at the MIDI setup. Now there's two MIDI interfaces available here because I've got a built-in interface on the Yamaha Reface CS, but I've also got a MIDI interface on my Steinberg hardware. I'm not using that, so I can turn off the visibility for that device and that means it won't show up as an option for my project. And you can see that because when I add a MIDI track, name the MIDI track and select add track over on the left hand side, my Steinberg interface is not there. So that just makes it a little less cluttered. I can also go to the MIDI output routing and select which device I want my MIDI data to be sent to. So in this case, I might select my Yamaha Reface CS. You can also do exactly the same thing for your audio hardware. So if you've got multiple inputs and outputs that you don't want to see, you can make them inactive by checking the box next to the input or output channel. Once you've got your audio hardware devices installed and you've got them selected from the audio device setup menu, it's time to go and specify the inputs and outputs for your audio hardware device. And you do this in the VST connections menu. In the VST connections window, you can see that we've got an input and outputs tab at the top. Now to keep this simple, all you're going to do is make sure that your input connections and your output connections match exactly what you're inputting and outputting on your audio hardware device. Input is what happens when we record audio into the computer. The device turns it into computer language. Output is what happens when the computer sends the information back to the audio output device and it goes to our monitors or our headphones. If you've got more inputs than you can see on the VST connections window, you can add a bus. You just need to choose whether it's a mono, which is one input, or a stereo, which is two inputs. Once you're done, name it and hit add device. I'm leaving mine set because I've just got two inputs and two outputs, which gives me a maximum configuration of one stereo or two mono tracks.
Over in the Outputs tab, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm looking at the back of my device to see where my studio monitors are, or my headphones are plugged in, and I'm making sure that I've got the right output channel selected. I can also assign the click track to those outputs. Let's go over those three important steps again. First of all, device is set up and we've selected our audio hardware device. Then we've gone to the control panel and we've made sure our buffer setting is right. Next up, VST connections and we've made sure our inputs and our outputs are correctly set. We're all set up and we're ready to start recording. So let's go to the add track icon and add an audio track. Now we need to select a mono or stereo audio track. We can name it and then hit add track. Now on the left hand side, you can see my input is set to left stereo, which is great because that's where my microphone is plugged in. If I wanted to use the second channel, then I could set my input routing to right and I'd be able to record out of the second channel in my hardware. Below that, we've got the output selector and I would leave that set at stereo out because we want to output in left and right, which is basically stereo. Down on the bottom right hand corner of the project window, you'll see the activity monitor and anything you do should show up there. And that's a sure sign that you're set up and you're ready to go. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for loads more videos on how you can be more creative with your software. Also, we love connecting with creative people. So look us up on social media. I'll catch you soon.